Hey guys, what's up? Today we are gonna be doing a new makeup and chat video. So I'm gonna be testing out new makeup that I got at Sephora and Ulta. And I also want to talk about something that's been on my mind lately and that topic is dupes. So we're gonna get into my feelings on dupes and how they've changed over the years, especially more recently. Um, so if that sounds good to you guys, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my hair back really quickly. I already did my eyebrows, so those are done. I just find it so hard to do them on camera. I mean, I already struggle with making my brows look even, so trying to do them in this tiny little mirror that's in front of me is almost impossible, so I'd rather just get them done in the bathroom. Oh my gosh, look at my hair. <laughs> I can't leave it like this. Hold on a second. These curls are just going everywhere today. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so the first product that I got is from In Beauty Project and this is their Mineral Sun Glow Broad Spectrum SPF 43. And this is a tinted mineral sunscreen. I don't think it's really supposed to give you that much coverage. I think the tint is really just to prevent that white cast that mineral sunscreens can have. So I got mine in the shade Fair Medium. And the claims on this are that it's a lightweight mineral sunscreen with a gorgeous sheer glow. It has an antioxidant rich formula. It has peptides to firm and plump your skin, vitamin C for free radical protection, black, red, and brown rice extract, which are supposed to protect from blue light from phones and screens. And the sunscreen is zinc oxide at 14.28. So because I'm going to be trying a new foundation today, I'm only going to put this on half of my face because I want to see what the foundation looks like without the sunscreen, just in case that skews the results a little bit. So we're going to see how it works with and without. So I guess I'm just going to work this into the right side of my face. Yeah, I mean, see, it has a little bit of tint, but as soon as you blend it in, it's pretty much clear. I don't think it's giving any coverage whatsoever, but I love how creamy this feels. It basically feels like I'm putting on a light moisturizer. It doesn't have a sunscreen feel. There's no weird smell. And I feel like it's giving hydration, but it's not greasy feeling. It's not thick or heavy. I feel like I need to do a video on the best mineral sunscreens because these can be so finicky with the different formulas and everything. Let me know if that's something you guys would watch. Next up for foundation, I have the new Anastasia Beauty Balm. So this is a serum boosted skin tint in a stick and it I have it in the shade two. So I have not opened this up yet. Let's take a look. This is what the packaging looks like. It's kind of the deodorant stick, which is interesting. Most stick foundations have like the round tube like this. So this is supposed to be a tinted soft solid serum that blends skincare and makeup with eight potent ingredients for a radiant smooth complexion. Its silky texture ensures seamless application for a naturally even and glowy finish. So I think the color is going to be okay. It looks a little tiny bit light just looking at it in the tube, but I could be wrong. It might be totally fine. So again, I'm going to put this on top of the SPF, which is probably the most realistic for me because I'm usually wearing SPF under my foundations, but I also just want want to see what it looks like on bare skin. So I'm just going to apply it directly from the tube and we'll see what happens. And I'm not expecting a ton of coverage because I know this is a skin tint. So I'm just going to work it in with the Profusion Buffing Foundation Brush. I really love this brush so much. I talked about Profusion brushes in a video not too long ago, and they are my absolute favorite affordable brushes. They're so good. I feel like they're really close to high end. You can get them on Amazon now. So I'll be sure to link my favorites down below. And I also have them in my Amazon store as well. I'm going to try just picking some up directly from the stick this way. That actually works too. So if you don't want to put the stick directly on your skin, you can always do this. And just at a first glance, this is blending in beautifully. Most of the time I feel like stick foundations have a thicker feel and they tend to kind of sit on top of your skin. This one is just blending in like any liquid foundation would. And I think the coverage isn't too bad. It's more than what I was expecting actually. So while I apply this, let's start talking about dupes because I know I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. So we all know that dupes have been part of my content for such a long time now, ever since I started my channel. And even before when I was blogging, 
I always talked about dupes. I loved going to the drugstore and finding them. There was sort of like this thrill of the hunt to find something similar to high end. And that was kind of the whole basis of when I first started my blog. I was flat broke, I couldn't afford the expensive makeup, yet I had just come from working at Sephora for three years, so I had tried it all when I was working there. But after I left that job, I wasn't getting the free makeup anymore, I kind of lost that perk. And I was working a retail job at Home Goods, and I made $8.50 an hour, so of course I couldn't afford high end makeup, and I went back to using drugs store, which is what I grew up using, and I started to notice similarities in drugstore products versus high end, and I thought, I want to start a blog and share this with everybody. So I started the budget beauty blog for people who were on a budget, and finding drugstore makeup that performed like high end was kind of my thing. It's what I became known for in the blogging world, and then... I transitioned over to YouTube after my son was born and I had more time because I was staying home and not working. So I have always loved dupes and those of you guys who have been with me for a long time know that. But in the past year or so, we have seen a big shift when it comes to dupes. And I'll explain why in just a second, but I want to quickly show you close up what my skin looks like with this foundation on. All right, so I think this actually looks really good. It's very glowy, even on its own. You can see the glow coming off of my skin. It has a little bit of a dewy feel, so it doesn't dry down completely. Over on this side with the SPF, I feel like it looks relatively the same. The SPF had a little bit of glow too, so it might be even glowier over here than it is over here. I think it is, but at the moment, it's not clinging to dry patches. It is just really, really dewy, very hydrating, which is such a surprise for a stick foundation. So it's something a little bit different than what I'm used to. And shoot, I was gonna use this new color corrector from Cali Ray, but I wanted to use it before foundation. I guess we can just put it on top anyway and see what happens. This is called the Hideaway Brightening Under Eye Color Corrector, and I got mine in the shade Dawn, which is a really light pink. This claims to give you bright eyes in a bottle with instant radiance that awakens the under eyes with an all-day formula. It also has peptides and three hyaluronic acids to plump up your skin and give a blurred look. And the formula is supposed to look invisible, but also conceal dark circles and create a lifted effect. So sounds really good. The bottle that it comes in is really nice and heavy. It's actually a glass tube. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on the outer corner and inner corner, that's where I have the most darkness. By the way, this is the Profusion Flat Setting Powder Brush, but I like to use it for concealer also. Um, so getting back to the dupes, we've all seen e.l.f. the past year start coming out with tons and tons of intentional dupes, copying Milk Makeup, Charlotte Tilbury, Dior, I mean, you name it. They're copying everybody and they haven't been really releasing their own unique products, unless it's like collab with something, like they just did the Liquid Death collab. But other than that, it seems like every single release is a dupe for a high-end product. By the way, this eye definitely looks a lot brighter than this one. I can see a difference just looking in the mirror. I, I don't see like the darkness right here over on this side. So I think this is really working well and it doesn't look like anything. It is completely invisible. So I really like this so far. But anyway, when e.l.f. first started duping other products, I thought it was kind of fun. I was excited about it, but it was kind of a once in a while thing at first. And now they're sort of building their brand identity on creating dupes. And there have been a couple of dupes that have been pretty good, but for the most part, I feel like they haven't really lived up to what I was expecting. And not only are the formulas lacking in a lot of cases, but also for me, it takes the thrill out of finding a dupe because they're just kind of handing it to us on a plate and saying, here's a cheaper version of this. And then I go and compare it to the original. Another example is like their CC cream that was supposedly like the It Cosmetics. I didn't find it to be at all. So I just find myself being disappointed. And the whole way that I sort of used to find dupes before is when I was trying a product and realizing, wow, this looks, performs, acts exactly like the higher end version. And in this case, it's kind of the opposite. 
they're giving us a product and basically insinuating that it's going to look and perform just like the high end. And then we're left disappointed because it isn't. And I'd rather do it the other way around where I just kind of stumble upon these things. You know, I don't know if you guys agree with me and I don't want to sound like I'm out of touch either because I know like everything is really expensive now and having a cheaper alternative is always a good thing. But I would rather drugstore brands just make really good makeup. It can be on trend, it can be something that is popular right now, but it doesn't have to be an exact copy of something that's trending, you know? I guess I'd love to see them just put their own spin on it and make it unique to that particular brand. It just feels like brands are losing their identities and once everybody becomes a clone of each other, it takes the fun out of makeup and it just makes everything so boring. All right, just quickly, I wanna show you what this under eye corrector looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this looks flawless. It doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look dry. It's a really nice hydrating formula. I think it sits really beautifully on my skin. And I actually feel like I don't even need concealer because it just brightened everything up so well. All right, let's move on to eyeshadow. I got one of these new little Too Faced palettes. This is the Born This Way Cold Smolder Nude. So they have two different versions. This is supposed to be the cool tone version, and then they also have a warmer toned option. I just got this one for now because I wanna see what the formula is like. Too Faced has been so hit or miss lately. I didn't wanna waste my money on two palettes in case they were bad. So I think this is cute. It comes in cardboard packaging, and it doesn't have a magnet like most of them do. It actually has a clip inside, so you can snap it shut and it stays closed, which is really nice. Inside you have six shades. There are three mattes, three shimmers. And even though they're calling this a cool tone palette, it's not completely cool tone. There's definitely some warmer browns in here, but nevertheless, it is a beautiful travel palette. I think this is gonna be awesome to take on vacations with me in the summer, especially with this clasp and how tight it closes. So. Anyway, I think I'm gonna start with the middle shade right here, and this is called Driftwood. I'm gonna be applying this with the large blending eyeshadow brush from Profusion. So getting back to the dupes, the reason that I decided to make this video is because um, I got a package from Mco Beauty, which you may have heard of now because there are a lot of videos coming out about them. They're an Australian makeup brand, and kind of like e.l.f., they do almost all dupes, except their dupes are even more dupey because they copy the packaging, like exactly. And at least e.l.f. isn't doing that. They're kind of making similar packaging, but not exact. I mean, some of these you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at them what the original is unless you like read the print on the package. And they had reached out to me, I wanna say it was like almost two months ago now, and they said, you know, we're an Australian makeup brand or we're the number one Australian makeup brand and we're coming to the US and we're gonna be in certain grocery stores, none of them that are around me, but I took a really quick look at the website and I was like, okay, they seem like a legit brand. I didn't really look too closely at the products, but I did see that the prices looked pretty affordable. So I was like, cool, yeah, you know, I'd love to try it. So they said they were gonna send me PR. And then a couple of weeks ago, I saw a video pop up from Tati and she didn't get the PR, but she saw it in her local grocery store. By the way, I'm just gonna blend it out with this shade right here called Cold Smolder. So as I was watching her video, I noticed that all of the products were dupes and she basically said, this is a dupe brand. As I watched her compare the dupes to the high end and they really weren't performing the same for her, I was starting to get more and more disappointed. Then Ali Glines came out with the video and she was talking about them as well. So they finally arrive at my house, I get this huge box with a bunch of their different bestsellers and I'm just looking at this package and I'm like, this was so nice of them to send to me. Obviously, I'm super grateful. But at the same time, I found myself not being super excited to try these products. Um, I'm just gonna use this shade right here, which is called Show Off. I had put the box to the side and every time I walked past it, and looked at it, I kept thinking, you know, I really should do a video on this. They sent me all these products. I feel like I should at least try them. But then at the same time, I'm realizing 
I don't have the high-end versions of most of these. I don't have the Drunk Elephant Drops. I don't have any of these Glossier products. I don't have the same shades in some of the products, so I can't really compare them directly. And I thought about, you know, if I'm gonna do a proper video and compare these to the originals, I have to buy the originals. And a lot of them are things that I'm just not interested in. So I would literally be buying the product for the video. And to me, it felt like such a waste, not just of money, but also because I know that if these products aren't things that I would have purchased anyway, they're literally gonna sit in a drawer and I'm never gonna touch them again after this video. So that thought was kind of holding me back as well. I'm just gonna pick up this deep dark shade right here. It's called Earthy. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in my outer corner. Oh wow, this is really pigmented. I actually picked up a little bit too much. So thinking about having to buy all of these extra products just to make a video was starting to kind of make me feel even more like I didn't want to do it. And every time I'm like walking past that box here in my makeup room, I feel this guilt like I should be doing a video on this. I should be talking about it. And then on the other hand, I just don't feel excited about it. And aside from all of that, I was noticing the prices which are printed in the box that they sent me and almost everything is around the $20 mark, whether it's slightly over 20 or just under like $18 and change. And they seem kind of expensive for dupes. And I know that they're not priced that way in Australia. They're only priced that way here. And it's because they have to import them. So I understand why the prices are higher. It's just that if I, you know, if I'm strapped for cash, if I want to buy a dupe because the original is out of my budget, am I really going to spend $20? on the dupe when I could just spend a little bit more and get the real thing. For me, one of the thrills of a dupe is that it's so much cheaper. And at least one thing you can say for e.l.f is that the products are really inexpensive. We know that most of them are made in China, which the cost of manufacturing over there is a lot less, so they don't have to charge as much for their products. But the Emco Beauty products are also made in China. So again, I was just asking myself, if I'm gonna buy a dupe like this, then why not just go for e.l.f.? They're a lot less expensive. By the way, this eyeshadow palette is actually performing really nicely. The shimmer shades are surprisingly creamy. They almost feel like Too Faced Old Formula, which is so nice. They do have a little bit more of a glittery effect versus shimmer, but they're nicely pigmented did, they're not like the sheer toppers. I did have some issues blending the darker shade in my outer corner. I felt like when I put it down, it was really pigmented. And then when I went to blend it, it kind of blended away. So I had to keep adding more, otherwise it looked patchy. I think it's okay for now, but we'll have to see how it holds up. I mean, for me, it's just a very basic neutral palette, but the formula seems nice so far. All right, I don't have a new mascara, so I'm just gonna use the Tarte Tartlet Tubing XL Mascara. So you might be wondering, how do brands like Alter Ego fit into my feelings on dupes? Because I do still talk about Alter Ego's palettes, and for some reason, I don't feel as strongly against them. Or for example, the Lamora palette that I talked about a couple of weeks ago that had that really great dupe on Amazon for the Natasha Denona palette. And for me, I think it comes down to the fact that they're not like bombarding us with dupes constantly, like brands like e.l.f. are. Alter Ego releases a couple of palettes a year. It's like every couple of months they come out with a new one. So I guess I don't feel the same like dupe fatigue with them as I do with e.l.f. And they're really one of the only brands that's actually duping these really expensive palettes. Nobody else is really doing that. And I know that some people will disagree with me here. So, I mean, feel free to disagree. I Because I see both sides of it, but I don't have a really strong moral objection to duping things because I feel like it's done in every single industry. And as someone who was broke for most of my life and couldn't afford all of the expensive things, I like that there are options at different price points. And while I still prefer a dupe, that is not intentional, something that is just maybe kind of similar and something that maybe dupes the vibes as opposed to like a straight up copy. Brands like Alter Ego that are straight up copying for some reason don't bother me as much. I think the other part of that is that when it comes to eyeshadow palettes at the drugstore, we are really limited. So having more of those affordable, more accessible brands is something that I think is needed, especially when the quality is good, like Alter Ego or ColourPop. But when it comes to e.l.f. duping, 
blushes or mascaras and things that there are like a thousand amazing versions at the drugstore that you could get anyway. It doesn't really feel like it's fulfilling a need anymore at this point. It's just hopping on a trend, kind of going back to what I said earlier. So I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Next up, I want to try the new bronzer stick from Too Faced. This is called the Chocolate Soleil Melting Bronzing and Sculpting Stick. So I got mine in the shade Chocolate Mousse and it says, says, our easy cream bronzer and sculpting stick gives you natural looking second skin warmth and dimension that smells as good as it looks. Use a dense brush or fingers to sweep along outer edges of face, forehead, cheekbones, and nose, then effortlessly blend for a magic sun-kissed look. So I believe this shade was the lightest shade that they had. Mm, it does smell like chocolate, although it's not like a creamy sort of chocolate like their palettes. To me, it smells identical to a Tootsie Roll. So it's almost like that powdery kind of chocolate smell, if that makes sense at all. All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit, ooh, that is so smooth, oh my gosh. I barely had to touch the stick to my face and it just went right on. It feels like a cream to powder formula when I touch it. So it's not sticky at all. And I'm loving this color. It's a little bit of a cooler undertone. I think this is gonna really go nicely with my skin. And I think that the depth of it is perfect. It's not too dark. I'm just gonna try picking up some from the stick versus actually putting it directly on my face. And by the way, this is the round tapered powder brush from Profusion. I use this for creams because it's a really dense brush, even though they say it's a powder brush. I actually don't like using it for powder because I think it's too stiff for that, but it's absolutely perfect for creams. I usually use it for cream blushes, but it's working awesome for this too. Wow, I am really loving this so much. This just gives me like the perfect amount of warmth to my skin. This is gorgeous and I love, like it literally is blending out so seamlessly. Wow, this is like so easy. I mean, it really has the blendability of the Rare Beauty bronzer, but I think I like this color even more than the Rare Beauty one that I have. I also feel like I have to put some down my neck because there's sort of a stark difference at this point. So I'm just gonna add a little. It just blends out so easily though. You only need the tiniest little bit of product. A little goes a really long way. Moving on to blush, I have one of the new Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blushes. So I have the shade Cheer, which I believe was Selena's custom shade. And this claims to be an airy, silky powder blush that brings instant life to your cheeks with a fresh, radiant flush that lasts. And it appears to be a baked formula. It looks really similar to their highlighters. So I'm just gonna pick this up on the Profusion Round Tapered Powder Brush. And we'll see what it looks like. It's actually very subtle. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more. It is very glowy though, so just keep that in mind. It's going to exaggerate texture a little bit. But yeah, it is very sheer. This is three layers of product and it doesn't really show up that dark. So it kind of reminds me of applying like a peachy pink highlighter as a blush. That's basically the effect that I'm getting. It's very pretty and maybe some of the deeper shades would show up a little bit more. But since I have very light skin, it's disappointing that one of the lighter shades hardly shows up on me. So on the other cheek, I do have another blush that I really wanna try. So I'm just gonna put it over here. And this is from Give. This is their Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint. So I got it in two shades. I got Purple Irises, which is a really cool tone pink, and then Marigolds, which is a little bit warmer, kind of like a coral. So this claims to be a collagen supporting cheek tint that lasts all day. It's supposed to support collagen to minimize the appearance of fine lines. And it also has ultra filling spheres to smooth and hydrate your skin. Skin. So it has a little doe foot applicator and I'm gonna use the marigold shade just because I feel like this color is really peachy over on this side. So I don't wanna put something like cool toned hot pink over here. So I'm just gonna dot this on and then I'm gonna use the Profusion Round Tapered Powder Brush and just blend this in using a patting motion. So the texture of this is kind of dewy. It doesn't dry down to a powder right away, so it is gonna leave a little bit of that tacky feeling. I'm just gonna put a little bit more because I felt like that sank in really quickly. And I also wanna see how easily this builds up on your skin. So yeah, I mean, it seems to be building really nicely. Just in comparison, this is two layers of this compared to three layers of 
the Rare Beauty blush. Like you can see a huge difference and it really kind of gives you an idea of how light this is. The fact that this is three layers and it's barely showing any color. So just something to keep in mind, but I like how this is blending out. I don't feel like it's messing with my foundation. And while it is a little tiny bit dewy, it doesn't feel sticky. So I do think it's gonna be really nice. I will be sure to pin a comment down below in the comment section and let you know how everything wears. But for lips, I also have the new ones from Give as well. These are the Dewy Plump Collagen Lip Gel. I got these in the exact same two colors, purple irises and marigolds, and I love that they coordinate the lip products with the cheek products. I think that is so cool. It just makes it super easy to coordinate. So these claim to also have that Sepi Lift ingredient that supports collagen to minimize the appearance of fine lines and it has ultra filling spheres to smooth and hydrate your lips. And there's supposed to be a tinted lip gel formula that's non-sticky. So again, I'm gonna apply the shade Marigolds. We'll see what it looks like. It smells really, really good. It smells like their lip gloss. If you've tried that, it has like vanilla cake batter, almost like a hint of coconut in it. Oh my gosh, it smells good enough to eat, honestly. Even though they say it's not sticky, it actually does feel kind of sticky. If I press my lips together, it has that tackiness, but I'm someone who doesn't really mind that because a stickier gloss tends to stay on a little bit better. So that's something that I don't mind at all. Some of you may. I also wanna mention that this is very thick. It's not a thin lip oil kind of feel. It is a thick, rich gloss. It has that cushiony plush texture that feels really hydrating. I personally like it a lot, but I would avoid this one if you don't like thick glosses and if you don't like ones that feel more sticky. I do kind of want to try out the other color though, because I know when it comes to lip products, arm swatches don't always tell the whole story. So I'm just going to put the pink one on and we can see what this looks like. It actually is like a pinky purple. You also don't need a lot of this. I I feel like the applicator picks up way more product than you need, but this is the shade Purple Irises. I love this one too. All right, so I just put the Marigold shade back on and here is the finished look. So I'm happy with the eyeshadow palette so far. Again, I will leave a pinned comment and let you know if it actually lasts throughout the day. I'm really loving the Give blush and lip glosses so far. The Too Faced bronzer stick is amazing. This might be actually my favorite product of the day, although there were a lot of really good ones. Also the Cali Ray Brightener, I feel like it did an amazing job at brightening up my eye area and it looks invisible. So I love that as well. I was also really happy with the mineral sunscreen from In Beauty Project. I felt like it was non-sticky. It just felt like skincare going on. So that's a really nice formula. The only thing I'm a little bit iffy on is the Anastasia Stick Foundation. And again, I'll make sure to leave a pinned comment down below, but just as it's been sitting on my skin, I noticed it kind of breaking up on my chin area and it's kind of starting to separate a little bit. It is a very, like, I don't want to say it's a greasy formula, but a little bit. It doesn't have that drier, creamier feel that a lot of stick foundations have. It's very slick and slippery. So I am worried a little bit just about the longevity and how it's going to last throughout the day. After all these years of wearing foundation, I feel like I can kind of see the signs of something starting to break up, but I could be wrong. I will definitely let you know down, like I said, in the comments. And I just want to say thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And I'd also love to hear your opinion on the dupe situation and what your thoughts are on those. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. I have a completely unsponsored channel. So all of my reviews are my own opinion. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.